Is that a line from a Madonna song? No end and no beginning. <laughs> My name is Dr. Kim Hellmans. I'm a professor at the Department of Neuroscience here at Carleton University. And today I'm going to be reacting to movie and TV clips that have to do with the brain. Okay, well now I'm going to react to Severance, uh, which was directed by Ben Stiller. And I have to say I'm actually midway through watching season one, so I'm really excited to talk about this one. So I really love this clip here showing what's happening when she gets this implant because it's actually a pretty accurate representation of a neurosurgical preparation. When people do, uh, neurosurgeons do surgery on humans, they have to stabilize the head so they put them in the stereotaxic frame is what it's called or a stereotaxic halo. So that's pretty accurate. And then the other piece that's quite on the nose is she's awake. And most people might think, oh my goodness, she's awake and she's getting something implanted. But that's in reality what what can be done uh, with brain surgeries. And so what's happening in this, in this clip is for sure she's having this implant uh, while she's alert, which seems kind of spooky and scary, and I think they play that up, but uh, the reality is that she would be experiencing no pain. And what I also like about this is the region where they are uh, implanting uh, the chip or the drug or whatever it is, is is pretty on the nose in terms of where you'd want to put something to manipulate memory. So uh, this is like woo, my model brain here. I've lost my cerebellum. Uh, this is my model brain showing the regions of the brain that are involved in memory. So in the video, that's kind of showing that they're they're implanting this like deep in the, the middle back part of the brain, which kind of lightly corresponds to the hippocampus, which is a region of the brain that's involved in uh, long-term memory storage. The one thing I would say is uh, based on the premise of the show, which is essentially that uh, what they're implanting in into these people is this drug or this device that prevents them from having memories of who they are when they're at work. They don't know what they do outside of work. Uh, they're outies. And then when they're outside of work, they don't know what they do for work. So they're manipulating their, their memory in some way. But that would also require, to some extent, their manipulation of consciousness. And you see these clips, if you watch the show, as they're going down in the elevator, their face kind of goes a little weird. Um, and it's like the switch goes on or off. And if you were to do that for real Z's, uh, for real neuroscience, it's not just about the hippocampus, it's also connecting the hippocampus to the outermost layer of the brain, which is your cortex. And your cortex is the parts of your brain that's involved in consciousness. You know, I, I gotta watch the show, we'll see what happens. Um, but if there was any device that would really do that to switch off memories in that way, you, wouldn't, you would need to target not just those subcortical brain regions, but also the cortex as well. So we'll see. It's a messy house. Senior heads prevailed. Just saying. <laughs> so whatever drug that is, getting him to clean his house was this drug? I couldn't stay messy on it. I hadn't had a cigarette in six hours, hadn't eaten. So, abstemious and tidy? What was this? A drug for people who wanted to be more anal retentive? <laughs> I wasn't high, wasn't wired, just clear. I knew what I needed to do and how to do it. Wish I had that. Just kidding. Um, so, my reaction to that is that whatever substance he took, it, it, it feels like a mix between what you would take for ADHD, so like a stimulant, and something that is a cognitive enhancer, so something like what's called a nootropic. So we don't really have that drug right now, that's not really something that's uh, available pharmacologically, but what I would say is whatever's happening, which seems amazing, be prepared for the crash afterward. What we say in uh, addiction or in substance use research is the bigger the high, the bigger the crash. So if he's going to be super super alert and super productive and feels really, really focused, the next day you're going to feel all the opposite of those things. Even though this drug seems like on the outside would be an amazing thing, it's probably going to cause some problems. Brain myths. Dopamine detox is good. No. Dopamine is involved in more than just 
feeling good, right? We know, yes, it is implicated in that, but dopamine is also involved in motor control. So it's involved in you walking. It's involved in you learning to avoid things that are scary. So dopamine is more than just pleasure. It's literally a teaching signal in the brain. Should we be stepping away from our phones? Should we be instead going out and touching grass and enjoying nature? Absolutely. But to say things like dopamine detoxes are a wise idea is just <laughs> neuro flap doodle. So now I'm gonna to react to Inside Out that was directed by Pete Doctor. Ah, so Riley, how was school? Oh, oh, you kidding me. Time. For this, we gave up that Brazilian helicopter pilot? <laughs> Boo, I'll be joy. School was great, all right? Riley, is everything okay? <sighs> oh, the Sir, she just rolled her eyes at us. What is her deal? All right, make a show of force. I don't wanna to have to put the foot down. No. Not the foot. Riley, I do not like this new attitude. Oh, I'll show you attitude over No, 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 no. Stay happy! What is your problem? Just leave me alone. Sir, reporting high levels of sass. Take it to DEFCON 2. You heard that, gentlemen? DEFCON 2. So, as the mother of a daughter who is 14, I feel this clip deeply in my soul because there's a lot of realism there in terms of the, shall we say, emotional roller coaster that is being an adolescent girl, probably a boy, but to a lesser extent. And there's a lot to say for sure about what's going on in the brain at this time because you're experiencing a rapid brain development at the same time as you've got hormones that are raging at this point, we're fluctuating from day to day, from hour to hour, minute to minute. I would say this captures really nicely what happens during adolescence. Parts of your brain that are involved in rational thought and planning and goal-directed behavior are connecting to your lower brain regions that are involved in emotional regulation and add into that that potpourri of the estrogens and the androgens, all those hormones that are critical and important in that brain development phase but also are involved in mood and planning and goal-directed behaviors. And so what's happening is it's this wild time where from one minute to the next, depending on what's happening with your brain, adolescence is marked by lots of shifting emotions and it can come out as rage, it can come out as sadness. It can be really difficult for parents to try to have conversations with your kid after school and you don't know what button you're actually gonna hit or what emotion's gonna come out. So this, uh, I, I definitely feel this in my soul. <laughs> Dreams, they feel real while we're in them, right? It's only when we wake up that we realize something was actually strange. Let me ask you a question. You, you never really remember the beginning of a dream, do you? You always wind up right in the middle of what's going on. I guess, yeah. Isn't that a line from a Madonna song? No end and no beginning. <laughs> so how did we end up here? Well, we just came from the... Uh... Think about it, Ariadne. How did you get here? Where are you right now? I'm in a dream. We're dreaming. You're actually in the middle of the workshop right now, sleeping. This is your first lesson in shared dreaming. Stay calm. Wow. I do really like that he does talk about dreams having no end and no beginning and that that is actually a very real representation of what it's like to be dreaming and sort of our lack of awareness that we're dreaming until potentially we wake up. Uh, although there is uh, the capability to do what's called lucid dreaming which is something that can be trained so you can actually learn how to experience almost that second consciousness that you're deeply asleep and yet you're aware that you're sleeping if that makes sense. It's interesting that you know they, she becomes aware that she's in a dream and the first thing that's happening is like things are exploding around her, which is fear inducing. I think about our dreams, a lot of them have a hugely charged emotional component. A lot of them are fear driven. And that's because the areas of the brain that are really quite dominant where we're in deep in what's called REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep are more your emotional centers. So areas like the amygdala, which is involved in our ability to learn how to associate events with fearful um, outcomes. So for sure, when we are dreaming, it, some of that is scary. And it's interesting because it also relates to uh, one of the major theories of dreaming that is propo that proposes that one of the main purposes of dreaming is that we can practice things in, while we're dreaming that we would need to sort of deal with in real life. So it's like considered the evolutionary theory of dreaming that imagine if we had to learn to battle enemies or hunt wild game 
we would actually practice that while we were sleeping. So there is there is some element of that in, in, this, in this clip that I saw. They did this cool experiment where they got rats um, to solve a maze and they recorded from brain cells, uh, from the brains of, of these animals while they were running the maze. And then what they did was while they were sleeping, they also recorded from the same population of cells. And what they found was they could actually do this trace and the animal was literally running the maze in its sleep, uh, suggesting that yes, while we're sleeping, it's in part a bit of mem memory consolidation, but it's also solving the day's problems while you're sleeping so that you're better able uh, to cope with them uh, when you're awake. So the science is very clear. If you have a problem that you're working on, take a nap, sleep on it. Brain myths. We only use 10% of our brain. We're using all our brain all the time. Is all our brain firing and excited at the same time? No. We have a lot of our brain structures and functions that are actively inhibited. Notice I used the word active. We do suppress a lot of our brain function. Like for example, right now, I'm not walking, right? But I'm actively inhibiting the parts of my brain that would normally be getting my legs to move. No, false. Rumors. Don't believe it.